Hi everyone, Angus Campbell here. Wednesday the 29th of April. So, uh, you'll see that the bandit is in the forefront of the shot. And that's because um, now we've completed uh, the lightning behind and since um, the last sort of post first start maintenance video on the bandit a few days ago, uh, on the lightning a few days ago, then since then it's had another run and I've uh, tuned the carbs and the tick over and uh, it seems to be running quite well. So I'm, I'll be doing a, another video on this shortly um, when the weather's now a bit better outside and we'll do a, a walk around and I'll uh, point out some of the things that I had to do during this restoration and also what bits and pieces aren't necessarily that original uh, that I've kept just to show a bit of its history but that's for another day uh, so while the weather's bad um, we've been sort of I think referencing the bandit a few times and um, what's been happening in the last day or so is that um, I've been liaising with the owner of this bandit I'm not the owner of the bandit it's not mine it belongs to uh, a friend of mine, Tony Page, and uh, the reason it, it's here is because he kindly lent it to me so we could borrow the Auto Advance unit to get some patterns made up. And that's one of the reasons why we need to recommission the bike. One, it needs a service. Two, it needs a bit of a polish up. But the main thing is that we've got to reinstall the Auto Advance unit and the points back plates and uh, time it all up again and that's not as straightforward as it would seem really because um, with this being um, originally an experimental motor um, we haven't necessarily got all the usual facilities to be able to do an initial static time on it and we certainly haven't got the right um, rotor on it with the correct markings for a, a bandit. It is a Lucas rotor but um, we haven't got the correct ones. And uh, obviously with this motor um, we've got something here that's uh, quite rare on a British twin of that period. Um, points in a strange position for a 180 degree crank. Anyway it's possible to uh, to time it up statically obviously but we'll need to get the crank in the right position. There is a timing hole on it, on the crankcase, but it's a bit rudimentary. And we'll have to take the uh, spark plugs out so we can uh, just be sure about which cylinders on the firing stroke. Um, and also what we've got to do as well is, uh, there's the um, Auto Advance unit and you'll see that it hasn't got its springs on and that's because we've had this apart um, obviously to measure up all the different components um, and this is a unique auto advance unit and I think if you see on the back of it there it is yeah so it's 15 degrees on this and if you look at uh, the more sort of common units they're 12 degrees so slightly different but the thing is that with respect to this auto advance unit as well, um, it's not like the usual twins, like the Lightning, for instance, where you know it's just on a taper, and therefore you've got to um, try and assess where it needs to be roughly first before you start timing it up. This one on the back is uh, is slotted for a peg, so it can only go on one position, which is which is good news. However. Because we've had this off, the cam, we didn't mark it up. I didn't mark it up before we took it off. So I'm not even sure if that's in the correct position or it's 180 degree out. So um, it could all get very interesting, really. Um, we're going to have to do quite a lot of checking with respect to position, position of the crank, firing cylinder, which points are which, and whether the cam's on the right way around as well. So it'll all get a bit intricate, but uh, we'll we'll sort it out anyway. 
And as I say, we'll do a full service on the bike as well because it uh, hasn't been run for quite a while, I think. And uh, although it's got a, a non-return valve, it sumps its oil just like the uh, Rocket 3 does over there. It does exactly the same. Um, so it's dripping a bit of oil as well. So th there's a bit of service to do on it. Now, originally, when I was uh, thinking of um, putting together a, a recommissioning video on this, um, and as it's um, not my bike, but we know a lot of history about it, I was going to do um, you know, quite a lengthier one, a uh, lengthier video. But um, what I've decided to do is do a, a separate, almost... Um, article if you like documentary on uh, the bandit and the fury and we can um, go into a lot more detail about this one about the original show one and the one that i'm currently building up the ss because they all are all sort of interlinked um between themselves and with with others as well they all helped one another out at one point so it's quite an interesting story so I'm going to do that as a separate separate video and uh, I've got the approval of uh, the owner uh, Tony Page to uh, use some of his uh, material as well which is kindly loaned so we'll put together a you know a fairly lengthy documentary on this on how he got interested in this lot how I got in uh, first then I got interested in this lot how we came about the bikes He's got uh, a running Fury Roadster as well, although it's in uh, 72 colours with a black frame. So we've got some photos of that too. Um, that's currently with him at his home. Um, but we'll put all that lot together as a separate video. So for this video, um, we'll just focus on getting this uh, getting this bike running again. And... Um, this is the same bike as the one in my very first video on YouTube some years back. I think it probably was 2013 when we first got it running. There's a short, pretty awful video still on the channel of this bike. Um, it's in portrait, it's about one and a half minutes long. There's no audio with it at all except for the engine running. Um, but it, um, well, it, it attempted to prove that We've got a running bandit, but obviously there's some skeptics out there that think I uh, I dub motor noises on it, and it it really doesn't sound at low revs like a twin at all. It does sound like a single, I have to admit. And um, but you'll see that anyway because what I'm also going to do in the in the documentary video is we've got a clip, another clip of um, it running when my uh, my daughter. Rode it briefly when we were at Cadwell once, uh, gave her a little go on it. Um, so we've got a clip of that, so I'll include that in the other, vi other video. And um, you, look, you may have come across my daughter before because last year when I put up uh, a video of us going out one Easter on the Rocket 3, um, she was on pillion holding the GoPro um, when we were out on the, on the Rocket 3 at the end there. So... Uh, She's she'll be in it too, wearing the same red leather jacket, which is actually my original first leather jacket, which we've still got. So anyway, enough rambling on about that. That'll all be revealed in um, a fairly lengthy, as I say, documentary that I'm beginning to put to the material together now for. But in the meantime, while we're still waiting for the head to come back on the, for the SS here, this is a bit um, static for now. Let's let's focus on this. Uh, and we'll get cracking. So, the first thing to do is we'll uh, we'll put the auto advance unit back together with its springs. Um, this is the uh, nut and the special washer to uh, secure it onto its stud that comes off the end of the exhaust cam. And these are the uh, pillar bolts to uh, to mount. The points back plate, and then you've got the two screws to uh, secure the cover on, which screw into uh, the top of the pillar bolts uh, with a gasket. So we've got all the original gasket. So uh, there we are. And, and as I say, this the points reside here, 
you can see it's a bit a uh, bit oily in there so makes you wonder whether the uh, the oil seal is weeping a little bit we're not going to go into that now um, but this is the uh, the stud upon which the the auto advance unit resides and you can't see it very well if at all but it is there but just there on the cam itself there's a peg and that peg is to go into the slot on the auto advance back plate so that's why it can only go in one position right so first let's build the um, auto advance unit up and then what we'll do is we'll take the two spark plugs out and we'll take I'm pretty sure there's a timing plug so you can insert something in the crank and I believe it's in a different position on this it's there whereas on the well the pre-production ones it was up here on a on a uh, almost like a, a special flange actually let's have a look here we are so this is the SS with uh, later cases and there it is on the SS so actually it is in roughly the same position but it on the other side of the motor yeah yeah it is in the same position but on the other side of the motor so we are all right anyway we've got that to help us anyway to get us the, the, the crank in the right position but as you can see there's only one hole on one side and it's a 180 degree crank so you can only time one cylinder with that method static method and then what you've got to do is you've got to position the uh, the points with their own set with its own separate um, slave backing plate where you can adjust the timing of those points you've got to adjust those to be exactly 180 degrees opposite uh, now not 180 degrees opposite it's going to be 90 degrees isn't it see what I mean we've got to think about this this isn't your uh, your average twin and but the point to make is that you'll see one of these sets of points has got a slave back plate so you can um, move the points around the back plate to, to adjust the, the, the timing position. The other one is static. So basically what we've got to do is wire, ensure this is wired up and on the correct cylinder that we can time with the crankcase plug on this set of points because then we've got the flexibility to move this one round to get it in the right position to be exactly, I think it's 90 degrees but I'll need to check that on that plate so that the other cylinder is correctly timed statically as well right I think that's it for now so let's get the uh, uh, auto advance units together and we'll get that in and this loosely in and then we'll be able to think about uh, positioning the crank. Okay. Right, the cavity's cleaned up quite well. I don't know what it was. It wasn't, I don't think it was oil anyway. Um, auto advance unit back together again. And then basically. Push it on. Until we get the peg in. That's not going too well. <laughs> I 
you can see the reason now, sorry about the camera angle there, uh, you can see the reason now why it's, this back plate isn't round like uh, most, it's got flats on it, and that's because you've got to get it past these two lugs, which secure the uh, points back plate. So let's just see where it is. So we know the peg is about there. Hmm. Don't remember having this problem in the uh, in the old days when I first did this. What on earth is going on with this? Oh, yeah. So we do need to get it, the peg on. Um, how are we going to do that? So what's happening is the, the back plate's up against the peg but hasn't located. But I can't twist the auto advance unit on its back uh, with its back plate because the pillars for the springs are catching on these lugs uh, so let's try it from the other way around I might have to uh, just turn the motor over a little. Right, let's turn the motor over a little so we can get that uh, peg in a different position. Right, sorry, I had to turn you off there because this is left hand kickstart. Uh, so this is going to make it even more interesting trying to position the crank up with a kickstart. Oh, I could use the back wheel actually with it in gear to get the, uh, the uh, timing timing locating pin in but anyway I've turned the motor over so the pins now rotated I don't know about 30 40 degrees anti-clockwise so let's grab the auto advance you in it have another go There we are. She's on. And it might be difficult for you to see, but the problem we had before was that tower, that little pin for the spring, uh, was catching on this lug, but now we're seated. Now the back plate's seated properly on its locating dowel. There's room there for that pin to pass the lug. Right. So what we can do now is grab all the other, well, most of the bits and pieces. Oh. 
first thing is the uh, the washer and you can see this is quite a special washer with a chamfered inner so the chamfer goes inwards and then we've got the lock nut I'm not going to obviously tighten this up too much just yet and that means then we can put the points black plate on now we know roughly what position this goes in because of where the wires exit i.e. right here's the slots for the pillar bolts and we've got one lug there and one Look 180 degrees opposite it down the bottom, which is the one that's giving us the trouble. So basically, without squashing the wires too much, that's it. That's how it goes. There we go. Something like that, and then we can pull those wires through a little. There we go. And there is a grommet on the back there, so we can push that in once we're all done. We won't need to do that just yet. First, so we'll just get the pillar bolts in. Of course, these are sort of standard, standard fitting in line with the more common bikes of the period. being careful so I don't there we go so I don't cross thread it because that's going to be nasty if we cross thread or damage the threads on those lugs because that's all cast in with the head right so it's something like that and then we've got to be careful with these wires Seat it a bit further in. Just being a bit careful with these wires, there we go. Because When we put the points cover on, just to show you, like so, there's As you can see, additional uh, flat here, which actually uh, covers up the uh, additional lobe where the the wires exit out the back. So what I'm going to do is, and similarly on the gasket, the gasket's got the lobe too. Uh, so. Just for now, while we start messing about, sorting out or um, servicing the rest of the bike, that's not right. 
all the way round. That's better. Whoops. <clears throat> Might help if you can see. There we go. Right, I'm just going to uh, need both hands to put the uh, the screws in just to uh, roughly locate the uh, outer cover. Right, that's better. Poor thing. Uh, has had that uh, side of it open for uh, for too long, but anyway, it's done its job. It's helped us out. Uh, so next thing, plugs out, spark plugs that is, uh, timing plug out the front, and then we'll uh, sort out some sort of contraption to um, act as a plunger on the crank, and then we'll uh, get the crank in the right position and see which cylinder we need to be messing with, and then we need to check the wiring back to the coils. Um, so anyway, uh, initially let's get the crank in the in the right position. Right, this is uh, next day, and uh, I've got everything around me over here to, uh, to uh, begin the job. So, when we left it yesterday, I just loosely put on the... Uh, the components for the timing at the top here for the ignition timing and uh, what we'll do now then is we'll, we'll take that cover off we'll take the plugs out regarding uh, turning the motor accurately to uh, position the crank on the timing plunger that goes in the in the front there um, then actually I've had a better idea in that instead of uh, having to use the kickstarter which is on the wrong side on this, the other side or the back wheel in gear to turn the motor when in fact the, the bike balances on its rear wheel and it's on the main stand anyway which is awkward then the, the good news about this motor being the other way around is that the, um, the rotor is on this side on the same side as the points so actually what we'll do is we'll um, take this uh, cover off to get access to the rotor and we'll use the rotor nut on a ratchet to, to turn the motor accurately. Right, we'll get on with uh, that. Um, when I remove the plug for the timing plunger at the front here I expect some oil to come out because I think it's sumped its oil. So we'll get that sorted out first and then what I'll do is I'll uh, time lapse me uh, timing this up. Right, we'll just uh, get the right tools to hand and then we'll be off.
Right, it was just a quick interlude there because I managed... Uh, firstly, the good news is that when I put this together and timed it up originally, then I did put some marks on the rotor. So that made it easier, and those marks do correspond to when I first used the plunger there to uh, roughly align the crank. So that's, that's good. The second thing, though, is that um, the bad news is that, as you saw, I timed up the first cylinder okay, and I was struggling a little with the second cylinder, and I found that one of the screws was a little tight, and I sorted that out, but also there, there are small eccentric adjusters to allow you to move the slave back plate, and um, the slot on that was damaged, so I thought I'd just replace it with a new one from a spare set of Lucas points that I've got for a triple and of course they're not the same damn size so anyway I've managed to dress up the original uh, the slot in it so at least uh, it should move with a screwdriver now and we'll put this uh, these points back together and we'll start again but it should be pretty quick as we know that the marks on the rotor are accurate so we can just line uh, line that up using the uh, the ratchet so we'll get it back onto uh, fast forward and do a time lapse and hopefully we'll finish this off. Right, I'm still struggling here because I now think that I do have the auto advance cam on 180 degrees out 
which is why I was scratching my head a bit there. So I'm going to turn that around now. I can't quite understand why it seemed to be in the right position the first time we did it, but then when I uh, had to take the points back plate off for some uh, sort of running repairs and then put back it on, um, I'm sure the points back plate has been put on the right way around because the wires are at the, are at the bottom on the exit of the case. Uh, but anyway, we'll turn around this uh, cam and uh, we'll see how we get on from there. Right, this looks much better. So, I've turned the cam 180 degrees around on its two pins and uh, I've got the crankshaft in the correct position for the right hand cylinder to fire because I know that's on its firing stroke having watched the valves and uh, this makes a hell of a lot more sense now because the left the left hand points in here which equates to the right hand cylinder here are just about to open but we don't want to time that side first because that's the set of points with the uh, slave uh, back plate where we can uh, adjust the timing on those points separately. We need to uh, first time up the points that are static on the main back plate first. Uh, so that's accurate before we can then, we've got the uh, flexible adjustment on the other side. So now, I'm going to turn this round. Then we should have the points about to open, the right hand points about to open. Full advance. And they are. Right. We're about there. So we can now put the timing light on. If I advance the cam, that should go off like so. So we need to, and it's still going off. This is good. And it's not going off there. Right, we can now tighten up the main back plate because the other points will move on the slave back plate that sits on top of the main back plate. Okay, right, I'm happy now. cylinder and you can see when that's right because so the piston come up goes over the top inlet valves opens inlet valve closes pistons coming up to the top so what the next time we mark Can 
use the time and light on the other side, advance the cam, and it's not going out. So we can now move the other points on the slave back plate. Which is awkward because of the little eccentric which has about had it. better off without that in actually. Oh there it is, right, there we go. about there. Oh, and there we are, job done. might have seen as well that I did check uh, the points at one point, make sure they were uh, at the correct gap. It's between 12 and 17, so I've set them at 15. Right, there's just one more screw there. There's, for some reason on this slave back plate there's three screws rather than two that you get on the... Uh, On the triples, I do suppose there's a bit more room. A bit more room in here. Job done. Um, right, finally, you'll have seen uh, as well that um, the sump was full of oil. And the reason why we also got oil out of the uh, rotor cover as well is because the um, primary chain case on this model, the level is maintained from the main crankcase. Hence, there's uh, an aperture between the two which is why the uh, main chain case is filled up too. But that's done that job and emptied that out. So that's taken a bit longer than we anticipated. So I'll probably leave it there for, uh, for this video. And um, what we'll do uh, in part two is just do the uh, other checks and maintenance 
give it a good clean up and then uh, that will prepare us then for uh, a fire up. Right, uh, we'll leave it there for now, but anyway, it's good to be uh, back on the bandit and to get the uh, the poor thing sorted out. We'll get the, uh, I'll get the cover, points cover back on now. I will just uh, turn it around 360 degrees and check those points gaps again, but this should be good, and then we'll take it from there. So thanks for your interest, thanks for uh, watching, um, any comments and subscriptions, and I'll see you all again soon, back for uh, part two. Thanks a lot, bye-bye. Quick postscript, there you go everybody, uh, cover on, and uh, for those of the, you uh, that spotted it, uh, I nearly forgot to secure the auto advance unit with its uh, special washer and nut, uh, but that's done. So, all done and secure in there, so we're uh, ready to uh, check spark etc when we get to the stage of putting the battery on. That's it for now, thanks a lot everybody, cheers, bye bye.